had a heart transplant. My chest was ripped open, my old heart taken out, and somebody else has put in it. I know it's terrifying. It's bad enough you had to see a picture of Jay's crotch tonight. <laughs> now you've got to hear about a guy that had a heart transplant. Well, when I tell people about it, I get the same reaction from everybody. They're usually horrified. But if they stick around long enough, they always ask me the same question. They said, have you seen the movie Return to Me? But really what they want to know is, did I inherit the personality characteristics of the person whose heart I received? And while I admit that I've been crazy since my heart transplant, I don't believe that I inherited the personality characteristics of my donor. And to understand why, you have to understand what it's like to have a transplant. My high school years were fantastic. I was into sports, music. I could run a mile in five minutes and 10 seconds. I went to concerts. I was a young entrepreneur. I had a thriving t-shirt business. I was in a band named the Slobbering Cantaloupes. <laughs> and it's true, we spelled cantaloupes with a K. <laughs> but at the beginning of my senior year, I started to notice that I couldn't breathe. And within nine months, I had lost 70 pounds, and I couldn't walk 10 yards without stopping to catch my breath. An 18-year-old, a year earlier, me, could run a mile in five minutes and 10 seconds, and I couldn't even walk 10 yards. <laughs> my heart was functioning at 10% of its capacity, my lungs were filling up with fluid, and I was literally sleeping 20 hours a day. At this point, the doctors gave me a 33% chance of, of getting better, a 33% chance of, getting, of staying the same, and a 33% chance of getting worse and eventually needing a heart transplant. And at this point, the natural thing would be to have a heart transplant evaluation, which basically meant that I became a human pincushion for two weeks. I had every test you could imagine done on me. I was literally dying. And I'm not sure that there's a picture that can accurately depict what it's like to slowly lose everything that you love about life to slowly have it taken from you, and then like that, overnight to get it back again. On May 4th, 1999, I did my last Pledge of Allegiance over my old heart, and I got a new one. And let me tell you, it is awesome getting a heart transplant. <laughs> to go from one day being bedridden, not being able to walk hardly, to the next day up walking around with blood flowing through your face, this picture was taken so soon after my transplant, I don't even remember it, obviously, from the stoned look in my face. <laughs> Three weeks later, I went to my own graduation and I walked at my own graduation. The real miracle here isn't that I could walk, thank you. <clears throat> what you guys are really clapping for is the fact that I graduated. <laughs> after not attending school my entire senior year. We got the slobbering cantaloupes back together, <laughs> and bit by bit, I started to put my life back together. And then an interesting thing happened. I started to notice new things that I loved about life, like Italian food, <laughs> or Vespas, or, or improv comedy. And this is the moment, thank you, this is the moment in every donor recipient's life where they ask themselves, is this really me? Is this really the person that I am? And the truth is, this always was me. It was my heart transplant that gave me the chance to live my life. And that's the beauty of it. And so every time I go to my doctors and I ask them like, if I can do something new or crazy, like go to Ecuador or, or Australia, they tell me the same thing. They say, Preston, we didn't give you that heart so you could sit at home. We gave it to you so you could live your life. And I've tried to live that way my whole life. Everything from my wife, Mindy, to my two sons, to my Vespa. When I prepared this talk, I, I, I did it, and I said that it wasn't advocating organ donation. And it's, it's not advocating organ donation, because I want you to keep your organs to yourself. I want you to tear open your life and discover what you love about it. And if you ever doubt, and if you ever wonder, and if you ever are scared, just think of this poor guy who was dying for the chance to live his life.
Thank you very much.